This is the perfect family scene when Mom, Dad, and Junior all want to hear the same radio program. Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my channel if you are new. I have had Q&A questions coming in. Haven't yet sat down to answer some. So, without further ado, gonna answer some of the most popular health and fitness Q&A questions that I have received. Okay, the easiest way to get abs is to start in your kitchen. Abs come from 80% diet, 20% exercise. So you want to be avoiding inflammatory foods. I'm coupling this with the how to get rid of the low belly pouch question. I've answered this question a few times in other videos as well. Anything below the belly button and above the pubic bone, if you're noticing a pouch there or some extra flibbery flub, that is inflammation. Below the belly button, inflammation. So to avoid that, avoid the top five inflammatory foods, which also cause water retention, which will hide the abs, which is alcohol, gluten, dairy, corn, and soy. How do you get rid of acne? Okay. I'm gonna make this very simple. Acne comes from the body releasing hydrogenated oils, primarily. Yes, there are things like hormonal acne, yada yada, but I have not seen one single acne case get completely healed by avoiding all hydrogenated oils in the diet. The body cannot break down those oils and thus pushes them out through the skin. I'm gonna throw up. And hydrogenated oils are often found in commercial salad dressings, commercial mayonnaises, fast foods, processed foods, things like that. So avoid those hydrogenated oils to help avoid acne. Fastest way to burn fat. Okay, also I wanna touch on, there's another question that I'm gonna couple in there. I wanna touch on the fact that there is no such thing as targeted fat loss, okay? So you cannot just burn fat on your arms alone or burn fat on your tummy alone or right on your ass, but you know, on your ass or on your legs either. You can't target fat loss. It does happen all around, but the best way to burn fat is to get the muscle built on your body. Build up your muscle. Ladies, you are not going to get bulky from lifting weights. I can assure you that. Put the muscle on your body. It will burn the fat for you while you are at rest. A good proper weight training session will burn calories and fat for up to 72 hours slash three days after the workout. And high intensity interval training will also burn fat post exercising. When you're doing slower steady state cardio, you are burning fat and calories while you're doing the exercise, but high intensity interval takes about a quarter of the time as a, as a huge long session, you know, 11 to 20 minutes is a good high intensity interval session time for cardio. And that is gonna burn extra fat due to EPOC, so post exercise oxygen consumption in the body. So that will burn fat for a good amount of time post-workout. Best ways to burn fat. Protein versus incomplete protein, can you explain? Yes, okay, so my best analogy for a protein versus an incomplete protein, your body's cells, imagine them like a house, okay? Each house has walls. So the walls of the house are built by proteins. If you are ingesting complete proteins, the walls of your cell houses are gonna be built out of things like concrete, strong, sturdy. If you're eating incomplete protein, you're gonna be building your little cell houses out of plywood, you know, not so great. So, be eating complete protein. Complete protein is a little bit more difficult for vegetarians and vegans as every single animal source is automatically a complete protein. If you are vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, you do need to do some food combining for complete proteins. Complete proteins are found in hemp, in chia, in flax, in quinoa, incomplete proteins, oh, soy also, but watch out for soy, raises a woman's estrogen a thousand percent and men's and will cause water retention and inflammation. Okay, so watch out for soy. A good combo of complete protein are rice and beans together. 
So that will create a complete protein for you. Just do some research on complete proteins versus incomplete proteins and food combining. If you would like a video on that, please comment below and I will make a whole separate video on that for you. I will post below the video I did on my favorite protein supplements and powders. They are all complete proteins. They are all plant-based, all vegan. Check those out below. How many times per week should you work out? You should not be working out if you are still sore. So if you've worked out and you go back to the gym when you're still sore, your muscles have not yet had an adequate amount of time to recover. So you're gonna need to take a little bit more time off. You can gauge you know, if you're ready to go back, but if you just have no more muscle soreness, it's a really easy rule of thumb to follow. You don't need to be doing three times a week and all these different sets and reps and a good rule of thumb is two days a week weight training, three to four days a week cardio, four to six days a week flexibility. When you're weight training, you don't need to do arm day, back day, chest day, leg day. I do a full body workout, one set to absolute failure. That means I'm only doing one set of each exercise, but I use a heavy enough weight that my muscles are maxing out and absolutely failing in between the six to 10 rep range. When that happens, you are in the zone of max muscle hypertrophy or max muscle growth. One more thing I wanna talk about when it comes to these abs. Do not do crunches, please. Crunches or other ab exercises that round the back are very bad. They promote bad posture. They also shorten the obliques. If you're a lady, you're gonna have some more saggy breasts because of this. Nobody wants a droopy chest, right? Okay, so leg raises are great for the core. Also, you are working out your abs any time you do free weights. So any, any, amount of weight that can go in a full range of motion. So things like cables, dumbbells, all of that, full range of motion, you are working out your core. I can't remember the last time I did ab exercises, so. Okay, I heard it's not good to eat the same things every single day, why? Is it just boredom? No, it is not just boredom. Your pancreas emits enzymes that help your body break down, assimilate, and digest the foods that you're ingesting. So if you are eating the same things day in and day out, you are overworking your pancreas and also you're making it kind of forget about and not really care about producing those other enzymes. So it's really good to be switching up your diet. Food rotation is great. The best rule of thumb for food rotation is every four days. So say you are a meat eater and you eat chicken on Monday, you could have chicken for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Monday. Don't have it again for another four days have something else. Great rule of thumb. Is it really that important to be eating breakfast? <sighs> there is so much controversy out there about this topic, especially with this new wave of intermittent fasting that's going on. Intermittent fasting is very good for the body. That means you usually have an eight hour eating window, a 16 hour fasting window, include the sleep in the 16 hours. So, that's not the only way to do it. There are different ways of combining your hours when it comes to intermittent fasting, but it does mean that you'd be having breakfast later in the day. If you are hungry in the morning, that is your body saying that it needs food. Okay? So you want to be eating if your body's asking for food. If your body needs food, it needs food. So if you, if you are super hungry first thing in the morning, don't fret. That just means your metabolism is kicking in. So eat your breakfast. I usually like to have a smaller breakfast uh, first thing in the morning. So I have a, a smoothie, a green smoothie. And then in maybe an hour or two later, I have something more hearty, like a bowl of oatmeal with banana and protein in there as well, or a couple of eggs on toast or something like that. Next. I eat a lot of fruit day in and day out and I drink a lot of tea. Is that in replacement of water? Okay, that question was worded a little strangely. I think she's asking, is that adequate enough for replacing your water intake with? And the answer is no. The more opaque a substance is, so the more you can't see through it, the more the body is going to use that as a food source or see that as a food source. So you're gonna to need to be having your clear waters, water with lemon is okay. Anything that you can really see through is gonna hydrate your body properly. Which is more important, counting macros or counting calories and why? Counting macros 
is very much more important than counting calories. I do not count calories and I do not count macros. The reason why is because I come from a past that included an eating disorder. So counting calories for me, I've done a lot of research on that subject and it is absolutely useless. It is not like calories in versus calories out. That's not all it boils down to. Yes, if you do eat in a caloric deficit, you are going to lose weight. However, if you're only going by calories, yeah, you could eat McDonald's every day, all day, or other unhealthy such processed things, but you're gonna be losing your muscle, you're gonna be making yourself unhealthy. It's just not a good way to go. Your body will treat 100 calories of fruit far differently than it will treat 100 calories of steak. It's completely different in the body. A calorie is just a unit of energy. So if you do really want to count one of these things, count your macros, make sure you're getting a minimum of half your body weight in pounds in grams of protein per day. That's a great rule of thumb. I wouldn't be having too many carbs, but don't eliminate carbs. All of these fad diets, the keto diet, and the South Beach diet, and the Atkins diet, it is not necessary to completely eliminate one source of macronutrient. Carbs, technically a carbohydrate is anything that never once had a set of eyes. So that includes all veggies and such. For carbohydrates for me, I eat a lot of sweet potatoes, bananas, oatmeal, things like gluten-free breads here and there. I try to stay away mostly from dairy and from breads containing gluten because it is inflammatory and will cause water retention. So that is probably the best explanation I've got for counting calories or macros and which is more important. I really follow intuitive eating now. That just means I eat what my body is asking for. I am very healthy so I don't get unhealthy cravings like for chips or chocolates or anything. If you are getting cravings it usually means that your body's asking for something else. For example, if you're craving chocolate, your body often wants magnesium, things like that. There's a lot of info online about that. If you want more info on that, please comment below and I'll give you more info on that. Okay, that leads me to the last question. What are the go-to supplements that you recommend? I always, always recommend fish oil. Fish oil is highly beneficial to the body. If you are vegan, you could try omega-3s. They do come in vegan form as well. So that would just be an omega-3 capsule. You really, 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 really want to load up on the omega-3s. Fish oil does tend to work the best with anyone that's had ancestry that's uh, far away from the equator. So if your ancestry was in a place that had heavy winters, you're gonna really thrive on fish oil in the body. I also recommend vitamin D, especially if you live in North America. Everybody in North America is in a deficit of vitamin D between the months of October and May. So I highly recommend supplementing with vitamin D. You can take up to 2,000 units per day. I get mine from Costco. Each capsule contains 1,000 units, so one in the morning, one at night, very simple. Uh, the next supplement I would probably recommend is magnesium. A lot of people are magnesium deficient. I drink a magnesium powder called Calm. Picture here. So I would be throwing that into your daily supplement intake, but it's up to what your body needs. You can get that tested with blood tests or see a natural path for that information. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. If you have any further Q&A questions you would like on anything health, wellness, fitness, or body image related, please comment them below or send me a private message and I'd be happy to answer those for you. If you thought this video was helpful or informative at all, please give it a thumbs up down there for me. Please hit that little bell notification icon if you would like notifications of when I post new videos and you will get sent one each time I post a new video. Until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life and I'll see you then. Bye!